Today's explosion in a nuclear plant in Fukushima, Japan, destroyed the building that houses the plant's reactor, triggering a radiation leak and fears of a nuclear meltdown. So just how dangerous is the situation? Joining us by phone from London is the director of public communications for the World Nuclear Association, Ian Horlacy. Ian, good morning to you. Hi, Russ. I'm doing just fine, sir. Let me ask you that first question. Just how dangerous is the situation this morning? Well, I think it's uh, less dangerous than it was yesterday. Uh, the challenge remains to keep the fuel cool in the reactor, particularly that uh, number one unit of the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Uh, as you know, 11 reactors uh, shut down automatically uh, when the earthquake hit. Um, and uh, with most of those, the, uh, the cooling has been reasonably straightforward there's been, because there's been uh, power supply to the plant either from uh, the grid or from the backup generators. But with uh, the two units, the first two units of the Fukushima Daiichi plant, um, the uh, generators cut in and ran for about an hour and then mm. stopped. And we understand the reason they were stopped is because they were overwhelmed by the tsunami. Uh, and that uh, precipitated the crisis, really, um, and, of, of, and the, in terms of the challenge of keeping the reactor cool, because they then had to default to their battery power uh, and th as far as I understand it, that may not have been sufficient to uh, do everything that was fully required. Yeah, Ian, let me, but, uh, let me ask you this, Ian. Uh, earlier there was a six-mile radius for evacuation around the, the plant. I think they've moved that to 12 miles now. From what you know about this, is that an appropriate, appropriate thing? Oh, well, it's, it's a very conservative thing, and it's, a, it's obviously the authorities are concerned that there might be a fuel meltdown. Well, they might have been, at least when they ordered the, re the, the um, evacuation. I think that that uh, possibility is, to, it is remote at the best of times and diminishing by the hour as the fuel uh, gets cooler and, and generates less heat. It now uh, would, be, would be generating only about half a percent of the heat that it was generating at the time that the reactor shut down. In, but, but the cooling demand is still great. I understand. In general, Ian, are Japanese nuclear plants prepared for these types of quakes? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, they're all built uh, in, the, in the secure knowledge that they'll uh, almost certainly have to endure serious earthquakes during their lifetime. And the reactors themselves are uh, built in a very robust way on solid rock. Uh, and uh, I think uh, with all the earthquakes that have been in Japan, I don't think any of the basic reactor structures have ever been damaged. Although, of course, all the services around are liable to be damaged. As uh, three years ago at Kashiwazaki Kariwa, it took some time to get those plants back. In fact, one or two of them still aren't back online yeah. because of the damage around them in the, in the main plant area, but not the reactor itself. Ian, very quickly, we've talked to a number of people in Japan uh, this morning, some of them as far away as in Tokyo, 170 miles away from the nuclear reactor, and they are concerned about what's going on. If you could speak to them, what advice would you give to them? Oh, just sit tight and watch. Um, it, it's really, uh, I mean, that, uh, that hydrogen explosion this morning or, or a few hours ago, um, this morning London time, um, was um, a, a surprise. Um, but hydrogen is always a factor in any nuclear reactor. And, um, but I think that the, uh, the focus here has been on keeping the things cool. And uh, obviously there was a hydrogen buildup somewhere and it blew all the cladding off the top mm -hmm. of the building. Um, and uh, as you can see from the TV footage. Um, but that, uh, that was a bit of a diversion. I don't think it's uh, increased the risk of uh, radiation release at all. Uh, there is a slight risk of radiation release, but not, uh, I think, of any magnitude. Okay. And uh, the, 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 there is a possibility that some fuel may be damaged, uh, but I think that a meltdown, particularly at this stage, uh, some 30 hours after uh, shutdown, is most unlikely. As you said, sit tight. Ian Horlacy, the Director of Public Communications for the World Nuclear Association. We thank you so much for joining us this morning for your insight.